Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing the early 1900s and how they devised their training between the ground and the stand-up. Initially, I wanted to do a video on the early rules of Judo and Arima around 1908 in his book. So it had to be before he describes the Kodokan contests and Initially, I wanted to discuss this, so but I found something that is worthy of its own video. So initially, in 1884, the pin was two seconds. Um, but later, I found something interesting, and it says that when it comes to the hold down, it is up to the referee or the judge to decide. And if there is some type of a control, then yes it uh, and someone escapes then you they are given a wazari same for the throw much like today but it was up to them to decide if it's uh, enough or not there wasn't a particular time limit like before the two second rule in 1884 it was clearly taken from wrestling but so let's say for example someone maintained it barely maintained it and kept fighting for it and then later he lost it and then someone uh, on the other hand had no trouble maintaining it while the other is really fighting hard then just call it off um, so it's very nuanced so it's kind of something that can be uh, studied again uh, not necessarily putting time limits uh, some people do fight it, it can be long it can be short whatever and so but what did uh, really uh, grab my attention was this one here so after speaking of the rules, he talked about uh, up to black belt. So before black belt, uh, on the ground, they were only permitted in competitions to do uh, hold downs. So, but everything else like uh, strangle, I'm not sure about strangles, but for sure joint locks, there were no, because keep in mind, a lot of kids trained until black belt. Still in Japan today, a lot of kids are a black belt so you you have high school students who are already second degree black belt so it kind of is the point but here the ratio is what really took my interest so uh, up until black belt level the first degree your stand up should be 70 to 80 percent and the controlling techniques should be 30 or 20 percent and above which means second degree and up it should be 60 40 amazing ratio which kind of explains why you had guys like Kimura in the 1910s and the 20s. Of course, later the Kosen Judo thing happened and really developed the groundwork, but that ratio was great. And and this brings me to something that a lot of people like to say, Kano hated the groundwork. And notice in grappling, we have a lot of hyperbolic language. So let's say uh, this champion trained under so-and-so. We just go black and white with it till the very end it could be a month it could be a year it could be two years so it's not always you know everything all or nothing and the same for Kano it's not that he hated the ground no he realized that you need to have proper priority for the stand-up and it, it shows here up until the black belt level 80% it should be standing up it's not just gripping and throwing or doing stand-up sparring only no because there's a lot that goes to it do you realize the infinite repetitions that children need in order to develop a proper throw and that's something the jujitsu crowd does not understand and i'm not saying that because i'm trying to say judo is superior or anything no i am saying that because after six years now i understand the amount of repetitions and still you can be very bad in that one throw that you constantly repeated for years and also Ukemi. Ukemi doesn't mean to fall. It means to receive. So how to receive a throw is also very important. Those things, how to effectively repeat thousands of time a throw and also how to receive it again thousands of time for your safety to understand how to escape it later. All these are very important and then later the ground can come because the ground is a much more controlled environment and it does not require that speed that the youth have and later you can slowly acquire it and even before the black belt level 20 to 30 percent is great to understand positions getting past the legs controlling the head when passing whatever it is and then later slowly adding the ground then you got monsters like kimura and it's very uh, understandable but later 
40 percent so we're saying four out of ten rounds is on the ground that's a great ratio because even now i know black belts in japan and in france you can tap them in the first 20 seconds and it's really a sad phenomenon that exists you have guys that are very tough on the ground don't get me wrong but that ratio should be maintained and really studied a lot of the times in the national institute of judo if you go and train in paris you know where it is the first four rounds are always on the ground a lot of the times and then the rest around six are stand up and you can develop really good groundwork so at the time of course kosen judo was a thing not a thing yet 1908 uh, it was kind of getting there because in the late 19th century that's when it started to happen but the whole thing with the separation and the groundwork specialty it it became a thing i would say around the 1910s when oda really wanted to grab all the medals and all the cups for his team so that's why he had to specialize on the ground so again we tend to be very hyperbolic when we talk about uh, kano or this person or that person it's always somewhere in the middle and again you have no idea the amount of repetitions you need and first in the stand-up in order to develop a proper throw it takes years so i i see these comments all the time uh now you see the throws in adcc so judo so uh jujitsu surpassed judo i'm sorry you are sadly mistaken i'm not saying that again to to be superior or anything no because you have to understand the amount of repetitions are they doing this type of repetitions that you see here i'm willing to bet all my bank account that no it's not happening and they see these subpar uchimata that happens and then all of a sudden now they go again hyperbolic now we have the throwing and we have the grappling on the ground and so now it's a superior art no not in the slightest and you should ask everyone who went to jujitsu i'll ask ishi again if you guys want me to i'll give you another example i had katarina costa recently on my channel and she talked about her foot sweep and how she became somewhat known for it and she talked about her trainer he says write down every single repetition you did in sparring and in drilling and i want you to reach the ten thousand repetition mark in a year and she finally did that so is any one of you doing that i'm not doing that so understanding the nuances of a throw doesn't necessarily mean you have mastered it again uh, it's all a big shade of grays that you have to reach nobody's doing that unless they have a proper background in wrestling or judo but to say in ju if you just go in jujitsu and all of a sudden because what's happening in adcc now these excuse my language subpar throwing and takedowns that now it's superior no because i understand the massive priority that it is the ground in jujitsu and the massive priority that it is the stand-up in judo and that's why it creates this like offset in the skill set so on the ground a lot of them can be very good and a lot of them can be very bad and the same for jujitsu you have guys that only start on the knees and they don't know a single takedown yet can be great champions but on the ground they f they fully commit to themselves so you have no idea the amount of repetitions that you need thousands upon thousands in order to get decent in one throw so please take that to heart drill them as much as you can same with your reception and develop that explosiveness and develop that awareness in the stand-up it's very important and also a lot of judokas getting tapped out in the first 20 seconds is not good at all don't say oh, i don't need it or if you're in competition i'll just turtle there's even a round that says anyone who prevents the stand-up or the katame waza i.e turtling also goes they are also penalized and it's not good so even uh, around the 1908 the, there was proper ground rules and ground and rule sets and even things like safety because at the time they said no twisting no joint locking the ankles or the knees and also the fingers ashigarami stayed there because it wasn't 
locking in the same sense as uh, trapping the knee, but later, of course, with the injuries, it went away. So um, again, when it comes to safety, I'm all for it, but everything else, it should stay as a technique and also develop the expression, not take away techniques or whatever. So if you have anything to add, let me know. This was Shadi. Thank you for listening.